All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today, out here working on this uh, Alice Chalmers All Crop 66 model uh, combine, uh, you know, pull type combine here. So, uh, if you guys have, were on a trekking channel before, uh, we, we bought this last, uh, last October or November last year and uh, brought it back home and uh, had to make a special hitch and everything to, to get it back because it, I'm pulling it behind a pickup truck, there's no way to, to kick the tongue over over there so it, it takes up like the whole road so um, we did a video on that so that's it's probably over on the trucking channel uh, so if you're interested in seeing that you can check that out over there when we brought it back uh, so it was in halfway decent shape i gave 300 dollars for it when i bought it uh, and i probably bought <laughs> probably eight or nine hundred dollars of parts but i haven't put any of them on yet so i just got it uh, i got last week was kind of a critically bad week for us uh, you know here first of first second week of July northeast Ohio we had like five inches of rain which is not typical here at all you, this is usually when we kind of turn to the dry season and uh, things start hardening and all that uh, so I was planning on last week was when all this stuff on my rye and oats and everything really needed to be combined so our oats uh, we planted some naked oats to combine for grain to sell to you know five pound bags to people because uh, it's kind of a popular uh, Chinese Asian thing we're uh, making flour out of naked oats uh, so most of those uh, since we couldn't get in there last week uh, all the the current the the seeds uh, have fallen off of the plant down on the ground so I'm probably end up just going to pile them under for the most part because I don't think it's even worth worth even combining uh, but we have rye though uh, I've got about probably five acres of rye down at the other place uh, that needs to be combined uh, because I'm going to bail that for straw. So that's mainly what I wanted it for. Uh, so we're going to use this to combine it with. Uh, the major issues this thing had, uh, PTO shaft uh, had an issue up here. So I got it over in the shop and been working on it. Uh, had, I, gotta put, I just ordered U-joints down at Napa. So I'll have those uh, here tomorrow morning so I can get this PTO shaft together. At least we can turn it over. Uh, but today, in the meantime, uh, the RAS bars over here in the cylinder they are uh th it's rubber on rubber threshing with these which is not uh, very typical of most combines so and here's uh, the cylinder in here which i'm going to get in there in a minute and i'm going to take you guys with me to start taking these bars off but here's the new bars and uh, basically this piece an, an angle with uh with about three eighths inch of uh rubber bonded to it so and that's uh between that and the there's two rubber strips on the bottom of the uh, concave down there, which uh, are held in by these new pieces, or pieces of steel, these are new obviously. Uh, so those go on the bottom. So it's rubber on rubber threshing in these machines, which they, I guess they do a pretty good job. I mean, my dad's family, they had one when he was a kid and they used it. And I, they said it did, he said it did a pretty good job. So we're gonna try it out. Uh, other than that, it's not, I gotta put a uh, top draper, which is this roll of uh, rubber-like stuff here. So, uses drapers basically conveyors so this one comes up and this one spins this way and it kind of feeds everything into the cylinder there to thresh everything so it's pretty simple machine for the most part only other problem i think i had i was just looking at the grain tank over there and uh the bottom of it has it's i put my finger through the bottom of the steel so i'm probably gonna have to cut some sheet metal or something to put around that and pop rivet it in so uh, that's really it. So I'm just gonna say I'm gonna change out these bars today and uh, maybe see how far I get before I go pick the boys up today, this afternoon. So then um, we said get that U-joint in that other side, that PTO shaft and hopefully fire this thing up. I mean, everything else looks good on it. The uh, cutter bar and everything down here looks pretty good uh, as far as the sickle teeth and everything on that. So uh, not a bad machine, but like I said, I probably have a thousand dollars into it right now, which it's hard to find. Uh, small combines right now, it always seems like even, I remember the old John Deere 45s and 55s and all that, uh, you used to be able to buy those for $500 to $1,000 and stuff, and now I see them going for like five, $6,000, which is just unreal in my opinion. So, so uh, that's kind of what we got going on here, guys. So uh, like I said, this model, I, I'm assuming it's out of the 1950s because they went to the bigger, the 72 and the 90 and all that stuff. So I think they made them up into the early 70s, this, these, these type of all crops. Um, but I, like, I believe this one's out in the 1950s. 
So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my stuff together. And then um, we're gonna crawl up inside here and start pulling some of these bars out, get them all out. And then I'm gonna get in there with the shop back and clean everything out here. So that, uh, go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm actually inside the back of the combine here on top of the straw walkers. I put myself a piece of uh, plywood down here. And uh, sorry I'm not in full view there because it's uh, not a lot of clearance in here. Um, so I was trying to get these bars in view. So these are what I'm going to take off. And there's eight of them in there. And there's two uh, rubber strips on the bottom with those metal bars through the top of those. So we got first step, I want to get all these out of here. Then that'll give me room to get in here with the shop back clean all this out then I can get to those two on the bottom and then there's a rubber strip up front there that I got too and um, I bought all these new parts to a guy out here um, by Warren um, he's got a place over in Pennsylvania he's, he's got a website called allcropharvester.com uh, nice guy to deal with and he can get you almost almost anything you need for these so and I know he I think he's seen one of our videos because last time I was out there he said something about it too so uh, I just want to give a little shout out to him because uh, yeah, I don't know where else I would have got a lot of this stuff. I mean, he actually has these bars specially made. I mean, they're kind of pricey. I mean, you're looking at like 500 bucks a set because um, they make, I think he gets like a $6,000 order together, then orders them all. Um, so, yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start ripping these out here. And uh, so, enjoy. <laughs> And these are fine thread bolts because this is going to be turning, you know, pretty fast. I mean, several hundred revolutions per minute. So, um, would definitely want to go back in. You know, if you end up breaking one, I would definitely go back in with a fine thread bolt. Get that out of there. <laughs> It's not quite enough room to get the uh, impact driver in back here, so I'll have to use a ratchet. get a half inch drive ratchet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just leave that one for a minute because I'm gonna go get a half inch drive. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll try this one more time with the foot method. If I can get turned around here. Because right. it, it is a little tricky to get in and out of here. <laughs> Just to say. Why is that one so much tighter than all the others? So use use this guy and probably break it off. Now that was surprising. I gave that about an 80% chance I would have snapped it off. So, so there's one down. Uh, seven more to go, it looks like. So get rid of... See, so the problem with these is all this rubber is gone off of here. So it's it's not going to... You'd have to tighten it down so tight. And then so all that mouse feces and everything else, is, which is terrible. I hate... Tell you guys one thing, mice are my most hated creature on the face of the earth, it, more than anything. Uh, they're disgusting creatures, they ruin stuff, especially with uh, metal, I mean, their urine and feces, it just, it just, it's so corrosive, just rot stuff out, they just make a huge mess. I mean, um, I, I take no, uh, you know, it's <laughs> no quarter with mice with me, I mean, if I, 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 they're dealt with. <laughs> so. Um, so you know, your best to try to keep them out of your old machines. A lot of times you can spray kerosene up in here or any metal surfaces and it, it'll, burn, it'll burn their stomach so they won't lay in it. So that's one way to keep them out of stuff. Um, but other than that, they, they will destroy stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm concerned about the bottom of this uh, concave here. So, uh, but anyways, I'm not going to have you guys sit here and watch me take every one of these out. We got one out, so we're going to take all the rest of them out. And then uh, we'll come back when I uh, get to the bottom ones, and then we'll clean all this out. So all right, we'll see you in a couple minutes, or probably longer than a couple minutes. A couple, you know. Uh, but anyways, get rid of that. All right, everybody. So we uh, got all the bars out here. Uh, took me about 45 minutes, roughly, to take them all out. So it was nice. Uh, I got an extension in here, and I was able to kind of get underneath of them and prop them up, counter, you know, turn them counterclockwise. Then, uh, you know, you could just stick this pry bar in between this and that shaft in the center and hold them up, and you just go down through and uh, zip them all off. And actually, I didn't break a single bolt, so surprisingly. So um, that was, yeah, like I said, especially using that half inch D walled impact, uh, like I said, really surprised I didn't break a single bolt. So, uh, next step, uh, last thing inside of here before I get out of here. Um, there's a rubber strip up here on the intake of this, and uh, there's a steel plate underneath that rubber strip on top, and I want to I want to take that out because I got that as well to replace. So I'll show you guys that. Um, yeah, it's right up here, right down here. So uh, I'm gonna take. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like eight bolts on that. So I'm gonna pull that guy off as well. And uh, once I get it off, I'll, I'll show it to you guys outside because I got a new strip that actually gets uh, 
it's got little rivets in it up here so it's hard to see from from this vantage point but uh, I'm gonna take that out real quick and then uh, we'll get out of here because I'm uh, starting to get some feet and leg cramps so but uh, all right all right so I got this other strip out of the front that I was showing you guys while I was still inside the combine here and uh, as you can see this just has little rivets in it which the new uh, the new uh, rubber came with uh, those rivets as well. There's a couple spots on here. I'm going to take this and probably heat it and bend it out straight. Um, I had to say something about not breaking any bolts. So when I was taking this out, I actually broke the bolts on each each end. I broke the bolts off of it. So um, I'm going to have to deal with that. So I wish I would have broke. Would have been better off breaking the uh, uh, rasp bar bolts off than those. This is going to be kind of tricky to get in there and drill out. So the uh, Last thing I do here for the uh, disassembly, basically, of the uh, cylinder components is uh, we got these half-inch bolts down through here that are those two uh, metal hold-downs for those two rubber strips in there. So I'm going to pull those out real quick, and hopefully we don't break any of those off, which those are just bolts through bolts. Um, the bolt that I broke off here is actually... Let's see if I can find it here it's right here so it's actually threaded in this angle up here so i'm gonna have to try to drill that out or something and either uh put a nut on the other side of it or whatever so i mean i wish it would if it was a regular through bolt it would have been no big deal but it's actually threaded into the structure of the machine so uh i'm gonna go ahead and pull it get a get my impact here and we're gonna pull these one of these out real quick and um, that will pretty well conclude the uh disassembly portion of this project There's one. And probably every one of these is going to get stuck in the socket. Yeah, those in a box. And uh, I was using a magnetic tray up inside there because. Uh, you don't want to drop anything down in here because it could get caught in an auger or something else if it's metal and could cause some problems for you. can't win. Probably be easier just to go grab a 5 16 bolt out of the bolt bin in there to get these out than doing it this way. But yeah. <laughs>
All right, two more back here. I'll let these the ratchet for. All right, everybody's loose down here, so uh, we'll go up top side there and uh, try to pull that out. All right, so this is actually this bottom unit here. So there's that guy. I'm just gonna take this on a smooth surface here. Should put it back in the back of the truck here. And tip that over so that uh, I just wanna save these bolts. So, so I have to get a hammer and knock those out, so. So uh, that's pretty much it right there. Uh, let me turn this around real quick. Yes, yeah, so we got one more of those to take out and that'll pretty well conclude the, the disassembly. So guys, uh, that's pretty much going to conclude uh, the first part of this little series I'm going to do on the uh, all crops, Alice uh, Chalmers All Crop 66 Combine, as you see here. Uh, so, we, like I said, we bought this last year. Uh, hadn't I knew it needed some a few things, but now it's like, as usual, when I need something, that's like when I'm uh, 
uh, you know, for us to get everything done to it. So uh, procrastination doesn't pay very well. Uh, but anyway, so this is going to be part one with the disassembly of the uh, cylinder, you know, the rasp bars and uh, all the rubber components and all that inside of there. Uh, so that's pretty much it with this one. So next one, uh, next video, we're going to be putting this back together for part two. And then uh, part three, I've got to put that PTO shaft together and uh, some other little repairs and stuff that I got to do on here with some sheet metal. And I'll uh, probably throw in the uh, this top draper as well. Uh, which is new ones right here, so that'll probably be uh, some miscellaneous stuff on part three. Then uh, hopefully with uh, part four, we'll get this thing set up, set everything, adjust it for rye, and we'll go down there and combine with it. To hopefully everything works, because uh, I gotta get this stuff out of the field down there. So we got other stuff uh, needs to needs to happen after that. So, uh, anyways, guys, uh, like I said, uh, subscribe if you're not already. Hit the bell for the updates. Like the video. Um, like I said, on this channel, we're, uh, you know, doing all the farming stuff, old equipment, uh, chickens, animals, all that good stuff. So always something going on. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get two videos out a week on, on this channel. So um, if you guys are coming over from our trucking channel, appreciate that. Uh, if you're interested in trucking stuff or uh, working on trucks, heavy equipment, um, I just got out owner-operated trucking, uh, started a uh, mobile on-site heavy equipment, the highway truck, and, uh, you know, ag equipment uh, repair business. Uh, so if you're interested in that stuff or some trucking business stuff, which I still got some videos on my agenda to do for trucking business, uh, you, know, you can check all that stuff out. We always put links on both of our uh, channels for either channel, so you can always uh, cross-reference or check that stuff out as well. So again, I uh, appreciate all the support. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.